more to turn up. Um, also, apologies in advance if you can hear in the background noise. It's a dishwasher that's going on over there uh, at my friend's house for the weekend. Thanks for the board games. They're all out over there. And we decide to uh, let's talk, and then I'm going to carry on going to play some board games later. start. Right, let me just see. I just need to select a PDF file from my computer. One second. Here we go. Right. So this should be working. You should be able to see my slides. I've got another copy of my slides on my tiny little window because I'm on my laptop today uh, over here. So forget if I get out of sync ever so slightly. Um, but hello, I'm Ben. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about Open Collective, gonna talk a little bit about what we do, how we work with organizations like the IO Foundation, uh, how we kind of work to support communities, uh, what we can do using the Open Collective platform, um, and about some of my personal experiences of using Open Collective over the course of the last five years. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get started. So hello, I'm Ben. Uh, I am based in the UK. I'm currently in Bath, where I used to live, visiting some friends. Um, I moved recently to Shropshire, which if you know the UK is uh, the western edge of England just before you hit Wales. Uh, it's very nice, got lots of hills. Um, I've lived here in the UK my whole life. Um, and very recently, I joined Open Collective. Um, I joined Open Collective in two capacities, which will make more sense uh, if I describe a little bit more about how Open Collective works um, in the future. But for now, just let's say I work at the Open Collective kind of constellation. Um, bit of personal history. So I have an affinity for the civic tech space and kind of democratic and, and civic participation has been a big part of what I do. Uh, this is a broad kind of CV of mine over the course of the last uh, 10 years, I guess now. Um, so the logo on the left is uh, My Society, which is a charity that's based here in the UK. They build websites uh, such as uh, Fix My Street, um, What Do They Know, and uh, Write to Your MP, and so on and so forth. They, they have a long, long history. I think they've been around for about 15 years now of building open source tools that help people engage with the democratic process and kind of hold accountable the people who have power over them in their, their kind of political and personal lives. Um, I worked there for about four years. I started their agency, as it were, kind of taking the same open source tools and technologies and building uh, custom versions for councils or for uh, cities or governments at large. Um, and that became a big part of what was sustaining um, the charity, which is kind of start of uh, a history that I've continued. Um, I didn't intend on getting into that job for that uh, particular reason, but it's something that I have since picked up. In 2015, 2016, uh, I actually left um, my society and I started a project uh, with a colleague of mine called Andrew Nesbitt also known as TBAS on the internet. 
uh, called Libraries.io. And the reason that I started that was that there was a moment um, in open source software uh, around the time that the Heartbleed vulnerability in OpenSSL came out. And people were asking a lot of questions about what projects look like OpenSSL that are kind of considered what we now call digital infrastructure. And um, yeah, that, that problem just kind of captivated me. It was uh, an economic problem. Uh, it was a problem about you know, open source software being at the core of everything that we kind of do now as a as a planet. Like software is basically open source plus in most instances. Um, and yeah, my journey has kind of continued from there. So worked on Libraries.io for a year um, with support from the Ford Foundation and the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation. Uh, Libraries is a search engine for software. Um, the idea was that if we could help folks find a solution in software to the problem that they were facing, maybe we'd be able to kind of reduce the size of the funnel of what is considered digital infrastructure and projects that we need to support. Um, and then from there, I moved on to GitHub where I was working on other problems that were around kind of maintainer time and uh, with the idea being that I was looking at kind of increasing the efficiency of this kind of open source engine, which currently runs on maintainer time, which is predominantly vol voluntary. Um, and then in March this year, I took what is probably considered my dream job, um, and I joined Open Collective uh, in two capacities, uh, which I will talk about in a second. So what is Open Collective? Uh, Open Collective started back in 2015 uh, with uh, an essay that was written by Xavier, uh, one of the founders of Open Collective, um, that was very kind of highfalutin and very kind of thoughtful in its description of why Open Collective was necessary. Um, it's uh, still available. You can go and view it on the Open Collective website. Uh, the, the, it's the first of three essays. Um, this one's titled The New Form of Association for the Internet Generation. Um, and it talks about the fact that as a community of people now developing open source software, we don't really have the same kind of boundaries. We collaborate across global boundaries across, ge across ge geopolitical boundaries, across financial and legal boundaries. And that comes with a lot of problems. Um, so uh, the team at the time uh, of Xavier, Azim and Pia um, started Open Collective with a bit of a mantra, which was this. Uh, if you can't beat them, abstract them. So. Uh, the way Open Collective works, which makes sense, is that we have kind of a three-tier structure uh, in which we build a platform, which is the Open Collective platform, um, that enables you to do a bunch of things, which I'm going to run through on this talk. Um, but we interface with a network of hosts. And we have over 300 hosts on the platform, including the IO Foundation. Um, and these hosts may host projects based on geography, they may host projects based on kind of the domain that they're working in, or they may host projects based on causes. And they provide a gateway to a given uh, collective, we call them kind of group of people that are working on a particular project and interface into the legal systems and the financial systems. They become what is known as like the physical host or sponsor uh, of a project. And basically they are there to yeah, provide the support function uh, for projects that would otherwise have to start a company, register a cooperative, register with a bank, all those kinds of things. And it's just kind of, again, making that whole system more efficient. Um, yeah, so we host on the Open Collective platform just over 300 active um, hosts. Uh, we have what we call a first party relationship with a few of them. So we run Open Source Collective, which is a host that is predominantly focused on supporting open source projects. And I'm the executive director of that organization. Uh, we have the Open Collective Foundation, which is more kind of focused on educational kind of needs and has by necessity over the course of the last two years, focused a lot of its time on building kind of mutual aid collectives that are supporting one another financially. Um, as a cooperative and as a group. Um, and then we have a whole range of other hosts. So uh, we have hosts that are looking specifically at climate change. We have hosts uh, that are looking at digital and civil rights, like the, the IOF. 
Um, and what we do is provide a home uh, to projects like, uh, in the instance of Open Source Collective, my organization, uh, Webpack, which is a very popular open source uh, packaging tool. Um, and uh, we provide that community with a number of kind of functions of support. Um, and we do that for another just over 3,000 um, communities on uh, Open Source Collective, which I laugh at because it feels uh, crazy um, given the very small number of staff that we actually have, I think, at the moment. In total, we have maybe three staff that are supporting 3,000 projects. Um, we have some staff that are working across uh, Open Source Collective, Open Collective Foundation, and Open Collective Inc., which is the organization that runs the platform of which I'm head of product. Um, See, I told you it would be easier for me to describe how I'm involved once I describe the structure of the organization, but there you go. Um, but yeah, we are through the platform that we used able to support 3000 projects, which for me just feels absolutely ridiculous, but it's possible and we're doing it and we have been doing it for over five years. Um, so yeah, the platform kind of enables us to hand off a lot of the responsibilities that we might need to otherwise get involved in um, when it comes to governance and so on. Um, and and yeah, like it just, it's an amazing thing that I can say that we support 3000 open source projects. So every time I say it, I feel yeah very lucky. Um, so I host a open source project on uh, open source collective and have done for a number of years. It's a very simple project. It's uh, called Octobox. If you use GitHub, um, you might uh, reel at the number of notifications that you get from GitHub. Um, we created something that's an alternative to that. And that's just an example of a project um, that is on open source collective and on open collective in general. Uh, oh, it's not skipping to the next slide. Let me just click the button. No. Yes. Oh, let me just change my browser. There we go. So this is a community. It's a community of people who are building software. Uh, and it's also a community of people who are supporting us. Um, and that is the power of Open Collective as a platform. Um, Open Collective is predominantly a financial management tool. Um, it enables us to uh, raise money for our project and to manage and spend money on our project, which we'll look at in a little bit more detail. But really, it's it's the place for us as a community. Um, and yeah, we love using it. Um, we've been using it for, I think, about four years as that community. Um, we also have a limited company. Uh, so one of the things that we have done with Octobox is We've been experimenting with um, questions around open source sustainability and whether folks prefer to support a company to develop the software and maintain the software that they use in their daily lives or whether they prefer to support the community. And what we've done is kind of back uh, the company uh, up with the community and back the community up with the company. So you can see here, top left, um, one of the biggest contributors to our community is actually our own limited company as well. So uh, we don't have any particular rules on the relationships that you have as a community with any other projects. That's not necessarily true for all host organizations. Um, as a host, uh, Open Source Collective is a 501c6 organization. It's kind of a mutual organization rather than a charity, which gives us a lot more freedom. But there are charities like the Open Source, uh, like the Open Collective Foundation that exist and use Open Collective Platform to get their work done. Um, but yeah, we're we're able to be very kind of free with how we support projects and what projects are allowed to do. <clears throat> so. I'm just going to run through some of the general kind of features of what Open Collective can be used to do. Um, this talk is not going to be an hour, and I'm you know, fully prepared to answer any questions. And I think I'm going to be in the lounge afterward if you prefer to ask questions uh, kind of privately and have a bit of a chat there as well. Um, but yeah, I just want to talk a little bit about what we use um, Open Collective for uh, and what you might want to use Open Collective for in your projects. So, as I say, principally, uh, Open Collective is about financial. So, it allows you to accept contributions. Um, so, you can accept contributions from anyone, companies, individuals, other collectives. Um, you can collect contributions in a number of ways. So, financial contributions. We are about uh, to launch 
uh, uh, contributions using crypto. Uh, and in the works, we are also about to launch, and um, I didn't tell you this because it's a bit of a sneak, uh, we are about to launch um, giving in public stock as well, which would be awesome. Um, but principally, uh, Open Collective is about accepting contributions, um, setting goals, uh, so being very honest and open and transparent about um, what you're trying to achieve with your project and kind of working towards that. Uh, and then managing expenses. So the whole point about Open Collective is that it is transparent, um, that it is all in the open. It's open source as an application. That's important to a certain degree. But more importantly, it takes the principles of building uh, technology using uh, open source kind of philosophy and applies that to financial management. So all the transactions are open. Um, if you want, you can go onto the Open Source Collective and you can see us running our own uh, expenses and our own ledger. Um, and yeah, we think that by building those behaviors into the technology, we can kind of build the same value system and the same kind of philosophy into the communities that we host on the platform. So yeah, everything is transparent. Everything is open. Um, there are some kind of private conversations that you can have around kind of administrative uh, kind of receipts and, and so on and so forth. But principally, the, the entire kind of shebang is um, is transparent. Uh, so, yeah, that stands for expenses. But more importantly, uh, it also stands for people's time. So this is me invoicing Open Source, uh, Open Collective Inc. for my time over the course of a month uh, to be head of product. Um, this isn't, like, I also uh, work on Open Source Collective, so I, this is one of the, the two kind of invoices that I send every month. Um, but there's a very important point here, which is that in open source technology, this is something that is not necessarily normalized just yet, but it is something that we are trying to normalize. I think um, as a community, we have kind of got to the point now where it has become uh, not necessarily normal, but certainly not exceptional uh, to see projects not only asking for financial contributions as a necessary alternative uh, to support the project as an alternative to contributing code or contributing time, uh, financial kind of contributions now kind of part of um, that package, really. Um, but what we have still yet to do is normalize and kind of build good governance and processes around paying for people's time, which I think we should do. So. We see a lot more of this. We see a lot less of this, but we are building the technology to enable that to become more normalized in the community. And I think that is incredibly valuable. Um, there is a lot more to Open Collective. Um, so Open Collective has been built as a platform for five years. Um, we've got features about kind of hosting uh, events. We host a community uh, similar to this community. Uh, called Sustain, which is about open source sustainability. And we have a collective called Sustain. Uh, you can go and check it out on Open Collective if you want. And we have hosted a number of events each year, and we use the platform to manage that event. Uh, we use the platform to sell tickets. Uh, tickets to the event are, I think it was, it was like $100, or you can buy one and pay for a ticket for somebody else that can afford for it, or afford to pay for a ticket. Um, and that was $200, and all that money goes into that particular event. And then from there, we can move that into a collective, and we can use that to, to pay to put on an event. So we put on three events in the past. We did our first one in San Francisco, did our second one in London, and then at the just before lockdown, <laughs> In January, we did our third one in, in Brussels. Um, and yeah, we've used the platform to kind of host that event and to manage all the expenditure and so on. And it's been great using the platform for that. Uh, we can also use uh, Open Collective for projects. So this is a recent feature um, that is around kind of subdividing money within a collective. So say you've managed to raise $10,000 from contributors, um, maybe you've got some sponsors uh, from GitHub, um, which is an integration that we have that I will talk about in a little bit more. Um, uh, maybe you have some services that you have effectively kind of provided in return for us a contribution back into the collective. We've done a little bit of that with Octobox as well. Um, but projects are really there for you to be able to earmark um, 
finances for a particular project. So that might not be a project, it might be a particular kind of thing that you want to do within the community, it might be a meetup, it might be something else. Um, but it allows you to kind of take a subset of that budget to be able to raise money for that particular project or to be able to spend money in that particular project and hold that ledger separate. Um, we're doing this for a community of people that are working on research in open source sustainability and some implementation of that as well. Um, the uh, project structure that we have set up under there is very much like a lightweight grant making structure as well. Um, so we also have what's called a fund above that. I think my next slide is about a fund, um, which allows companies to have a single payer kind of experience and onboarding ramp into Open Collective. Uh, so we launched funds, I think about three months ago, and it allows a host to invoice a big company like Google, for instance, for a year's worth of contributions to multiple collectives over the course of the year, um, or to allow them to kind of give more freely over the course of the year, according to, you know, like a contributor fund arrangement or uh, some other courses or other processes that they want to go through. Um, so the grants that we have that we are administrating, uh, uh, we are basically looking after for Ford and Sloan, uh, we have a fund that is uh, carrying the fund for those grants, and then we have projects for each of those initiatives that we transfer the funds to, all of which is transparent, all of which is completely uh, crockable on the interwebs, which is, yeah, again, this principle of kind of taking open source software development and applying it to financial kind of transactions is, is what we're doing. So, yeah, um, that's funds. Uh, the, the main message here is generally the open collective kind of takes the same yeah, principles and processes of open source software and applies it to your project's finances. Um, and we think that that's an incredibly powerful thing to do in the world. We think that by doing that, we will basically gain uh, the same kind of value systems as we have in open source, where it's about kind of freedom, it's about the freedom to inspect kind of, you know, who's been paid, what the project's paying for, um, who is supporting the project financially and kind of building communities around that so that uh, communities that would otherwise struggle to interface into the real world, uh, he says in inverted commas because we're increasingly a digital world, um, and not have to found a company and start a bank account and go through all of those issues. Um, so yeah, I think that is pretty much like an overview of the platform. Um, if you want to take a look at just how transparent we are, you can see all of Open Source Collective's transaction history throughout the years that it's existed. So we're just as transparent for our own organization as we are for individual collectives. We don't you know, force you to be more transparent than us. Um, yeah, and I think that's like my overview of the platform. Uh, my prompt here is to join us, which would be uh, as a community. So if you have a project and you are looking for a way to be able to use money within that project that is uh, inclusive, that it is kind of, uh, in, it, it's it's transparent, um, and that it's uh, something that you can use as a resource to kind of forward your, your individual cause. Um, equally, if you want to join as a host and support others in a similar way, um, host there to you know process uh, transactions for you to hold money on your behalf. Um, some hosts uh, provide uh, capacity to, to host trademarks or to offer employment contracts and so on and so forth. We do that as well. Um, or to join us as a contributor and basically look at the, I think we have you know 3,000 projects on the Open Source Collective. I don't even know how many thousands of projects we have across all of our 300 plus hosts on the platform, but yeah, I would say contributing to causes um, would be the other way of, of contributing as well. So, yeah, that's my my overview of the platform. Um, this has been a, a very quick run through. Uh, I am more than happy to take questions now, talk a little bit more about my personal history with Open Collective, the work that I'm doing on open source sustainability, the work that I've done with my own collective, Octobox, um, and some of the work that we're doing to basically share some of the Kind of contributions that we've had over the course of the years um, with the rest of the open source community uh, and just generally yeah chat about open collective and how we might be able to help you as 
a collective, as a host organization or as a platform. Thank you very much. Oh, here we go. We've got a question from Jean. Do I run fundraising events or campaigns to invite funders to come visit the OC space? Uh, and check if they would like to support project. Do you run fundraising events or campaigns to invite funders to come visit? Um, so we have run fundraising campaigns in the past. Uh, we recently ran a fundraising campaign called Fund OSS, which is a project of open source collective, so not open collective platform wide. Um, and uh, that was reasonably successful. So we raised, I think, about $95,000 for a suite of projects that were participating in a pilot. I think there was about 58 projects. Um, and yeah, we were we, we have run fundraising events that are, that are different to that in the past. Um, we talk a lot about the platform. We talk a lot about our projects and so on. Um, it's something that we continue to do. It's something that we are also looking at because I think this kind of concept of giving, especially to projects in open source, is more kind of normalized now. Um, but yeah, like as a host organization, we definitely kind of uh, run fundraising events and will continue to do so. Um, check out Fund OSS if you're interested in that kind of thing. Um, Sustain OSS equally is, uh, could be seen as a fundraising event as much as anything else as well. Uh, what's the future roadmap that I most look forward to? Uh, I would say that open stocks is probably going to be a pretty big feature, but it is also going to be a kind of side project. So we're kind of heavily branding that as its own thing. Um, I think no one has looked at the opportunity of giving public stock, which you know, a lot of companies these days give part of their remuneration to employees and public stock. Being able to use uh, public stock as a contribution for a project is, I think, a net zero from a tax perspective. So it's actually more tax efficient than giving some of the money that you might have as an individual to an open source project or another community as well. Um, and obviously, yeah, stocks and shares are you know, part of the world and something that people personally have access to, but communities frequently don't. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, other things that I'm looking forward to, uh, being entirely selfish, we're pushing a load of work for hosts to improve some of the dashboards that you get as a host to see what's going on with the collectives that you're supporting financially and in terms of like activity and so on. Um, which is going to make host life very easy in comparison to what it is now, which is a little bit more introspective. Um, yeah, uh, the other thing to say is that we're working on it, but our roadmap is also public. So if you go to GitHub um, and the Open Collective organization, you can see our uh, roadmap in a project log. Uh, GitHub are also investing in GitHub projects, so that will look a hell of a lot nicer soon. I think maybe in the next couple of months they'll be launching something there. Um, so yeah, any plans to integrate insights from GitHub into that dashboard? Uh, not at the moment, but it is something that I know quite well because I know the team from my history at GitHub who are working on insights, and I know that that team, uh, yeah, is has got a lot of like interesting th things that are coming down the pipe. Um, I think the thing about GitHub Insights is that it's incredibly open source centric. And from a product perspective, one of the things that we need to do as an organization is kind of build for communities that don't just exist as uh, software communities. Um, but yeah, I'm aware of uh, Insights. I'm aware of the fact, I think it was a, it was a acquisition about the time I joined GitHub actually. Um, and it would be interesting to do something. I think they are having some trouble with their own product set there as well. Um, so yeah, I would I would be interested in definitely looking at it. Um, but it would very much be from the perspective of this might be useful for a small subset of hosts rather than than hosts in general. So yeah, definitely interested in looking at it. And just generally interested in having conversations about the product on the, the platform side. Um, Uh, anything else? This was a shorter conversation than the hour that we have allotted, but to be honest, I didn't want to spend an hour talking about uh, Open Collective as a platform because I think that might be a little bit much. I think the, the cliff notes are possibly enough. <laughs> uh, 
Okay. So I think maybe I will stop there if there are no more questions. Um, thank you all for joining me. Uh, again, if you want to hear a little bit more, I'm going to be hanging out um, in the lounge uh, and I'm also on the interwebs as Benjam, uh, pretty much Benjam anywhere. So you can always have a chat with me. Uh, happy to chat about open source and open source collective. Happy to chat about open collective as a platform and happy to kind of, yeah, talk about your project. Um, anything really, all good. Bye.